No, Soot is king, ruler, right? It's one of the titles of the king. So Hotep de Nasut is offerings of the of the king, meaning that the subject is buried, right? But he's part of a kingdom, a civilization, and he gets a proper burial. Um, ordered by the state. And that's the Hotep de Nasut. So a lot of the things that we uh these terms that we use trivially today, right? They actually have uh Important means in Kemet, but the way you see, you have to see it. You have to see it in the context of the writings on the wall, and so that way your science is not hidden from it. So we, so for example, we fell into the trap with uh, Pharaoh, right? Which the Greeks might have gotten as Pera, you know, the great house, right? Pera is house and ah is great. Pair of ah is the great house. But every time you see his name, it's not so bitty. It's his title. His title. Sare, right? Um uh, uh Nebhor, right? Hey brother, how you doing? Peace, man. Everything is good. You so? So um, so those are the titles. So for the European to come and say, oh, he's the Pharaoh, that means he's hiding knowledge, huh? He's hiding knowledge is simple. Pharaoh, Pharaoh means the great house. That's correct. So when he comes and says Pharaoh, what he's doing is simplifying the knowledge. He's saying, I own it, and I'm simplifying the knowledge. So it's important for us to be scientists and start to try to read all of our ancient languages, whether they are uh, Nabali, whether it's uh, Islam, whether it's uh, Hebrew, right? So that we can um, uncover the mysteries. I actually went through, I tried to go through the things, I tried to study the Israelite doctrine, but that didn't catch me like the Nabali. Like now, when I first got introduced to the Valley Civilization, it's just like it hit me. Like that's where I was supposed to be. You know, honestly, that's why that's what made me come to the museum. That's what really cool. I mean, about the museum. Well, it's good that you came to the museum with us because you actually did, you can actually see scholars speak yeah. to the uh, to the artifacts themselves instead of just speaking around kings and queens and and, and making up stuff. Either it says what I say or it doesn't say what I say. It's as simple as that, right? And then put it in its uh, timeline, like Horam Hem, right? Or Minta Hotel, or I'm in a hat, or Zozo. Put these people in the context. And then luckily I was able to show you the sacred things like the Wah Staff and things like you see all the time, but no one ever bothered to here before, right? You never saw the wild staff right before, right? But it's right there. So you have to have someone who knows where to look. Like I said, I've been to the museum two times before you, before I went with you guys, and I learned more than the one time I went with you guys than the two times that I went before that. Well, I mean, I, I learned a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Well, and, and uh, let me for myself, I've been a commit and Polite has been a commit. So, um, Kemet, Egypt, as most people uh, know that, right? So, uh, now we have a bigger uh, viewpoint, right? But, yo, but, but yo, all, yo, all excuse me, permiso, mira, permiso, excuse all, all, me. All this what language you speak, yo? He's going to take all this knowledge that we have from all the different sources, right? And find ourselves and, uh, and or crystallize our thoughts. Right? Um, so there's, there's, there's knowledge everywhere because what was lost in Kemet, it may actually show up in Hebrew. It might show up in Islam. It may show up there. But if you don't know anything about the primary, you wouldn't know what you're looking at. Right? Because all great people of that time made uh, pilgrimages to ancient Kemet. It was a center of knowledge in the world. Of course, they, their, their own story says that they were in Kemet. So, right? why, so why did the Hebrews despise Kemet so much? 
Wow. What, what, is, what is that that you wow. um, It wasn't their civilization. They couldn't run it, and they needed to create a civilization of their own. So, uh, they had to defy their own culture. So they defied their own culture. All, all societies do that. All people yeah. do that. You're right, you're right. right? They defied their own. Even before Kimmy was united, before Kimmy was united, you had French, other communities, and you had war. And then they, a ruler came, Namhar, he united it, and then he deified his civilization and moved out remnants of the other civilization. You have, um, even though you have King um, um, Nasuch, like Akhenaten, who was a scientist, there was a battle between science and religion in Kemet. The religious people, uh, is the downfall of ancient Kemet, the priesthood. Yeah, science is what started, yeah, it's really there, right? Yeah, it started with science. Well, it, it started itself at the same time. Science and religion was started at the same time. Science is a uh, hypothesis that go into experimental stage, like creation of the world, and religion is beliefs. Yeah, yeah. Hypotheses that turn into beliefs. So there was always a, a battle between man with religion and um, science. And it's been one of the bloodiest world wars. But I can tell you that religion without science is slavery. Now there are people who are religious who use science to validate their religion. That's a step up instead of just being a believer and can't back it up. A regurgitator. There are people that say, well, what you're saying makes sense in my religion. Right? Oh, and they use science. They don't use complete science. They have boundaries to where they, where they start. So you have people who are what you call intelligent design that believe that God created an intelligence in the universe and everything that comes is because of God. And then there are other people who believe that um, that God makes everything, made every species, uh, every animal, every piece of matter, God did that each individually. Those are creation.